very sorry I have to leave uh, for another session, but uh, I apologize and very much look forward to the conversation I can stay here for. I'm going to take a broad view of entrepreneurship and innovation and say that it really is founded in the creation of knowledge and the transmission of knowledge. And I'm also going to talk about the translation of discoveries and ideas into society. So this is a broader view of entrepreneurship and innovation for societal benefit, not solely for economic gain. And I think it's important that we realize that many entrepreneurial ideas will benefit society, but they may not uh, bring in the financial returns, things in health innovations, food production, clean water, environmental uh, protections that we all need to value. Uh, my fundamental point is that uh, critical to success, uh, central to success, is an entrepreneurial ethos. Uh, and that's a culture, an environment, and an outlook. Um, I was just listening to the last session and, and thinking about how important it is to build on regional strengths. You can build that ethos if you have regional and local strengths and you build that confidence and that ability to take that risk and move forward. Um, not every place should or should want to become a Silicon Valley. Every, in every region will have its own strengths. I, I do want to talk about the um, different uh, aspects of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, and I'm going to focus on three main groups. Um, and the first one are the classics that great researchers, professors, postdocs, their postgraduate students, come up with great ideas in their research. They discover something. That discovery then needs to get translated into society and sometimes those uh, great researchers can also make great entrepreneurs. Uh, we need to help that community and that's the traditional community that's been working for decades. I think that what's changing is we're seeing a huge growth in student entrepreneurs and I mean undergraduate students and even younger students um, those students have great ideas. They have ideas that may be more focused on social enterprises, social entrepreneurship. They need help with their business plan, their pitch. Uh, they, and we have done things like that by creating um, forums for students. Uh, of course, student competitions all over the world generate all kinds of um, excellent uh, entrepreneurs. We found that there were too few female entrepreneurs, young women, entering competitions, entering our Dragon's Den and other competitions. So we created a program for women. They came out of the woodwork, and now guess what? They're winning those other competitions. Need to provide the impetus to uh, get out there, and you need to provide the mentorship and the support. The third group that I think uh, touches upon uh, what you brought up is uh, is the majority of society. And I think that there's a huge resource in our communities around our institutions and in the general public. Crowdsourcing is bringing the general public into the opportunity to contribute ideas and to move the world forward. And we've created maker spaces in a very deprived community where our new innovation campus is. And that, those maker spaces are bringing people in. They're very creative people. They want this opportunity to do something new and do something different. So these three groups of people need three main things, I believe. Uh, they need funding, space, and mentorship. On the funding side, of course, fundamental to the uh, researcher is research funding. Governments need to fund fundamental research where new ideas come forward, where where uh, discoveries are made, where professors and postdocs uh, will pursue their ideas. But after that, the ability to find venture funding, and I think venture funding is changing. We have venture capitalists, we have venture funds, but we also have corporations like Google and others that have their own venture fund. And I think that there are new ways to collaborate uh, with corporations that will be very effective in moving some of our nascent ideas uh, into uh, society. There are uh, angel investors and they're philanthropists who want to help, want to help the uh, entrepreneurs at their university and those are very important. Prizes matter. Just having a small prize, an opportunity for students to come together 
And in competing for that prize, receive the mentorship, the education, the camaraderie, build the confidence in themselves, um, and perhaps win a little bit of money to help with their startup. It's interesting to me how much difference a small amount of money can make, and prizes, seed funds, and other things can often come from philanthropy. And under funding, I would also say subsidized space, because uh, sometimes uh, the place to do your next work uh, can come through a financial benefit. So space is the second thing, and, and we all know about incubators. We have incubators all over the place that are often big benches with network and, and entrepreneurs all over the place working on their apps for their computer. I want to make a plea for more uh, laboratory incubators. We have some of the only wet lab incubators in London, and we're very pleased that they're oversubscribed because there are still people who have ideas to make tangible goods, to make things that they need a, a fume hood for and they need to do chemistry or biology for. So incubators are very important. We find that accelerators are also important. Lower cost opportunities for earlier stage ventures that may or may not last as long, that may or may not succeed. Sometimes one can subsidize this space for an equity share. We found a need for a new type of space that uh, in London we call a hack space and that has different meanings to different people but basically prototyping spaces where the tools and laboratories are available to prototype ideas, to test out things, to build things, to make things. Um, those facilities outside of the fundamental research labs are quite important because our colleagues say they're democratizing the space. Anybody can pursue an idea and take it into our hack spaces. And then you need to understand the need for this ethos and this environment, and there have to be commons, places where people gather, have coffee, food, have an opportunity to share ideas. We've taken a small space in the basement of our library and made an enterprise lab where students uh, who are pursuing entrepreneurial ideas will be with one another and with mentors. Uh, that type of space is very important. And finally, most important is mentorship. Uh, we uh, need the expertise and, and experience that comes from uh, those who've been out in the world. Uh, we are developing a venture mentoring service that's much like MIT's. In fact, we've copied it from MIT and MIT has helped us. Uh, it's an opportunity for friends and alumni who are serial entrepreneurs, who have comfort with failure, who know when to pivot, who know when to actually give up on an idea. Um, everyone needs that kind of advice and, and we find people very willing to share their experiences and share their advice. I would mention that professors need mentorship too. They can be the most brilliant researcher and they need that help getting that research out into society and thinking about business plans. We've created a new mentorship program called Techcelerate for postdocs. Postdocs are a very uh, strong component where they've got research ideas, they have nascent uh, ideas to pursue, and they, they can be very, um, very fruitful. And finally, that mentorship involves peers as well. When you gather people in the right spaces, you create the right environment, and you have the opportunity to interact, you will learn great things. Finally, I want to mention the community outreach. Uh, our new campus is in White City, a very deprived neighborhood of London. We've opened what, uh, what we call the invention rooms, and we've opened it up for now to, uh, to school students in, in the neighborhood. We have maker challenges, and they use these maker spaces to pursue an idea and to make something. Just that action of making something and, and making a prototype and having it work changes their outlook on life, gives them a new impetus to go back and work harder in school and to think about themselves in the future in a different way. We think it's very exciting and there's many uh, ways that we could benefit from empowering a broader community uh, such as those in the neighborhoods around our universities. Thank you.